never a good thing, I guess. It's the first time I've had anybody ask me if there was a silver lining. Uh, I think the answer to that is no. no I mean, no timing of it. The there's timing. no silver lining. Uh, it, it's just, you know, obviously it's a, a detriment to our team. But more importantly, for Jacob, uh, I'm just sick for him. He's, uh, he's worked extremely hard to get back on the floor. He's done everything he's supposed to do. And, and you know, you could see it on a daily basis, the improvement in practice uh, for him getting closer to his old self. So to have it happen is certainly a tough blow. And, you know, now our focus needs to shift number one to make sure we support him and get him through a difficult time as reality sets in that he's got a, another long road ahead of him. Uh, but then also try to get the team ready because our plan was to kind of go with the three-headed monster in there with, with he and Christian and Calvin. Uh, now that the threesome's down to two. What did you learn uh, playing Missouri, and what do you what do you hope to learn this weekend? You know, I think every time you go on the floor against somebody else, you know, it, it answers some questions as coaches you may have in your mind. I wonder if we're where we need to be in this area of the game. When you play someone else, some of those things can get exposed. Uh, sometimes you do things better than maybe you thought you were ready for. Um, and I think the Missouri scrimmage, I think that was exactly the case. I, I think we, uh, we handled their physicality once we got into the game uh, pretty well. We had some young guys out there that in their first uh, did not play scared at all. Uh, they were aggressive. Uh, and, you know, we didn't shoot it great, but we, we did some things really well that I was pleased with. You know, just continuing to go down the path of unselfishness. You know, we have to play together. If we're going to have a chance to succeed, that's got to be our MO. Uh, the ball's got to move, and, and while you have to be unselfish on offense, and that's generally what people talk about when they talk about unselfish players, our ability to communicate on the defensive end um, is going to be critical, and, and lack of communication is, a, is selfish, in my opinion. So those are things that we're trying to clean up. Uh, you know, we need to be a little bit more connected on the defensive end of the floor. Uh, we're moving that direction, but certainly haven't arrived where we need to be. What has enabled your system to be, uh, I mean, part of it is the players, I'm sure, but you're five. In the last three, four years, the five positions done, it's, it's produced a lot. Why, why is that? What, what is the key to that? Well, I mean, the game has changed. You know, when I was playing, I'd run down to the block and go block to block and bang on that guy and then go to the other end and try to defend a guy doing the same thing to me. Now, bigs are required to run, uh, and once you get there, you're sprinting into ball screens, and then on the other end, you're defending ball screens. So I think it takes a little bit more than it used to from an effort standpoint, an athletic standpoint. Uh, but part of what happens with us is because we've recruited shooters and once guys have gotten here, they've developed and continue to work on their game, the floor is open, the lane is open. There are not a lot of double teams. Uh, you're slipping into the paint to, to an open area a lot. And you're able to get some easy baskets uh, that could get you going. So, uh, you know, it'll be interesting now with Christian being relatively new. He didn't play a lot last year. And Calvin being totally new, how quickly we can get them ingrained into what we want to do. Uh, because the reality of it is it really took Martin until his third year before he was doing it at a high level. So. Uh, it's going to be a challenge, but it's one I think those guys are happy to accept.